Hey, it's Chris Westfall here from MedicareAgentTraining.com, and I just figured I'd save you some frustration on behalf of your clients and make you twice as effective. Have you ever wondered why people don't return your phone calls when you leave a voicemail on their voicemail machine or answering machine or whatever? The reason why, in most cases, is because you didn't think through what you're going to leave as a message. Today, I finally took the time to research this person after playing back the voicemail three different times. And if I'd slowed it down, it would have been better. Well, let me just let you listen to it for yourself. Here's the voicemail that I got today. Hi, Chris. My name is Jessica Katie. I was hoping to speak with you. If you could give me a call back, my number is 800-662-5080, and I'll be at extension 7280. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Bam. Gone. Just like that. I have no idea who this... All I got was Jessica... And then I got three digits, three digits, four digits, and then a five-digit extension, and then click. No idea why she's calling. No idea who she is. What's, what's in it for me to call back? So I wrote her this little message here, and I said, you know, on the off chance that it was an important phone call, I did investigate it thoroughly and finally figured out who you are from Google searches. And most people, I think 90%, would have totally disregarded that voicemail and just deleted it because, first, the person didn't care enough to identify who they were, why they're calling, what's in it for me, and slow the heck down when telling someone your phone number. My gosh, you know, in law enforcement, we always, when a dispatcher would rattle off a number, please call them at 407 229 or whatever. We'd reply back on the microphone at writing speed, please, because we have to write this stuff down if we're going to call somebody. Heck, I couldn't even punch it in on my keyboard, not type 80 words a minute fast enough to call this person back. So if you're going to leave a voicemail for somebody, please, for crying out loud, tell them who you are. Tell them why you're calling. Make it interesting so they want to call you back, of course. But leave your phone number at least twice and at writing speed. Most of our clients we deal with are seniors, and they are not that fast when it comes to writing things down, nor should they be expected to be. And I'm not a senior yet, but I can't write down a phone number that stinking fast especially if you're ridiculous enough in your office to have a five-digit extension number for crying out loud, get your own DID. Get your own direct inward dial phone number, that's an 800 number, that rings at your desk. If your company wants you to get phone calls back, if you're working for somebody, you should have your own 800 number. It just makes it easy. And guess what? 800 numbers cost maybe $2 per month. Maybe. You can get them at call fire all day long. So that's just what my rant for today, and I spelled curiosity wrong, so I'm going to fix that. And maybe people are just thinking that, you know, I'll just create some curiosity and the person will call me back. But more than likely, I suspect this person just wanted to check off on their little list that they made a phone call. And, well, I attempted to call somebody and they didn't answer the phone because it is a marketer at an insurance company. I just checked it off. But if you want to be effective... Tell somebody why you're calling. Who the heck are you and why should I call you back? And then, if I do want to call you back, how the heck am I supposed to reach you if you shotgun out your phone number like that? So hopefully this can help you. Just think about how you sound when somebody is playing back that message. And hopefully it doesn't sound anything like this. Hi, Chris. My name is Jessica Katie. I was hoping to speak with you. If you could give me a call back, my number is 800 662 and I'll be at extension 7280. Thanks so much. Have a great day. You have a great day. Bye-bye.